Hey y'all, Mike here from All American Reviews, and today I'm talking about how to find coolers made in the USA. Whether you're a big outdoorsman, a serious tailgater, or just looking for something to bring down to the beach or have in the backyard, everybody knows the value of a great cooler. It's gotta be durable, portable, keep the elements out, and keep the cold in. The coolers industry has exploded in recent years too. We found over 50 cooler brands in our research, and economic experts predict that by the year 2027, the global portable coolers market is gonna be over $12.2 billion. So, how do you tell the good from the bad and the ones that are made in America versus the ones that are not? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. I'm going to talk about how to spot coolers that are made in the USA, my top picks for American-made coolers, and make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we'll be answering some frequently asked questions. I've also written about this exact same topic before, so check in the description below for a link to that article. And if you're passionate about buying American-made products, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and make sure to head over to All American Reviews. You'll find a ton of research and buying guides on shopping American-made. Let's get started with how to find coolers made in the USA. First up, let's cover how to spot which coolers are made in the USA. Earlier, I mentioned that we found over 50 cooler brands in our research. Now, not all of those are made in the USA, so we whittled down our list to the ones that are, and they love to use made in the USA language in their marketing. But not all of them are actually assembling and sourcing all of their materials from the United States. So, like we have mentioned in previous videos, words matter. Look out for those qualifiers like made in the USA with imported materials and assembled in the USA, which don't always mean that it's 100% made here. Manufacturers are legally required by Title 19, Chapter 4, Section 1304 of the United States Code to list the country of origin on the product or product packaging for any products that are primarily imported. However, that's not always the case if they're doing some manufacturing here and also sourcing some materials overseas. In those cases, it's best to call the brand, figure out where they're assembling their products and where they're sourcing their raw materials, which isn't necessarily information that's always available on their site. Speaking of sourcing, coolers are mostly made up of plastic, foam, and rubber. But not just any plastic. Most of the nicer, hard-sided coolers that you see on the market today are actually made from a roto-molded plastic, which basically just means that it has zero seams and is impact resistant, which helps with durability. You'll also see the cool colors and designs on the outside of the cooler, but inside the plastic walls of the cooler is typically a pressure injected polyurethane foam. Pressure injected basically just means that it is jam packed in there, leaving no room for air to get out, air to get in, keeping your cooler insulated and your drinks cold. The good coolers are going to use that foam insulation all around the cooler. The brands that skimp are probably not going to include some of that polyurethane foam on the lid uh, and in some of the crevices around the cooler. Rubber is also typically used to create a Loctite seal around the cooler as well as latch it down so that nothing gets in or out and it doesn't open it up on you unexpectedly. So as you can see, the materials list for making a good cooler really isn't that long. You just gotta make sure that all of those raw materials are sourced here. According to the latest data that we have from the Plastics Industry Association, the plastics industry is the eighth largest in the US, but globally, we're actually behind China and Europe. The polyurethane foam industry is also big in the US, China, and a bunch of other countries around the world, but the quality between American manufactured foam and Chinese foam is actually pretty stark. In the US, we have a lot of quality standards like those in place from the American Society for Testing and Materials, or the ASTM, that really help us create a consistent and effective testing procedure for products. That is pretty much non-existent in China. There have been several studies over the years about the harmful chemicals that are actually in Chinese polyurethane foam. I'll cover more details in a different video, but let's just say that lead and arsenic are two of those chemicals. That's slightly less important for coolers, but still not a great sign for quality standards overall. So be sure to pick brands that are not only assembling their coolers here, but also sourcing their plastic and foam domestically as well. Like I said earlier, you can always give them a call or just head over to All American Reviews and see if we've done the research for you already. For more tips, you can check out my full video on how to find products made in the USA, which I've linked to in the description below. All right, now that we've covered some tips for how to spot American-made coolers, let's get into my top picks for coolers made in the USA. 
Now I'm only going to cover five brands in today's video, so for all of the details on our recommendations and a full list, make sure to head over to All American Reviews. You'll find our full research on the best coolers made in the USA, which I've also linked to in the description below. First up is Orion Coolers. Orion Coolers are a total beast. We put them through a bunch of stress tests and it is one durable cooler. It did decent on ice retention, lasted for about a week, uh, which is pretty standard for some of your nicer hard side coolers, but a lot better than what you're gonna get out of your standard Coleman. These coolers come in a bunch of different sizes and colors and have a great non-stick pad on the top, which is great for holding gear or just acting as a cutting board. If you're looking for something to take with you on your next hunting or fishing trip, definitely check out Orion Coolers. Next up is Pelican Coolers. Pelican makes both hard and soft side coolers. We tested their Elite hard side cooler and loved it. It is actually one of the best coolers that we tested for ice retention, lasting around eight days, which is pretty consistent with some of the other tests that we looked at for this cooler as well. This cooler has some nice cup holders on top, some non-skid pads on the bottom, and has some great locking latches that were the most secure of all the coolers that we tested. Personally, I think Pelican coolers are a good option no matter who you are. So if you're looking for a really good cooler that does well on ice retention, definitely check out Pelican. Next up is Grizzly Coolers. We tested their 15 quart hard side cooler, which is great for somebody who wants something small but effective. This cooler has a great shoulder strap that makes it really easy to carry. And it also did pretty average on our ice retention test lasting about a week. We did not test their soft side coolers, which are actually not made in the USA, so make sure to stick to their hard side coolers. So, if you need something to bring on a camping or fishing trip, I think Grizzly is a great option. Next up is Cordova Coolers. We tested their Big Hoss 128 quart hard side cooler called their Excursion Series and really liked it. It's pretty light for its size, so we were kind of worried that it isn't thick enough or didn't have enough insulation to do well on ice retention, but it actually did pretty decent. The Cordova Excursion Cooler can hold up to 32 one gallon jugs, 120 cans, or 120 pounds of ice, so it's great to just stick in your truck bed for your next hunt or tailgate. And the last brand I'll cover in today's video is Orca Coolers. We tested Orca's 20 quart hard side cooler, which has a nice thick metal handle going over the top of it, making it really easy to carry. This cooler also did well on ice retention, lasting about seven days, and it has your pretty typical rubber latch straps uh, that secure the cooler on top. It also has a nice little cargo net on the back for extra storage. So if you need something that's super portable and easy to carry around, I think the 20 quart hard side option from Orca Coolers is a great pick. Now let's get to some frequently asked questions. First up, are Yeti coolers made in the USA? Contrary to popular belief, Yeti is not 100% made in the USA. Some of their popular Tundra series coolers are made in the Philippines. Now we have a full breakdown of where Yeti coolers are made on All American Reviews, so be sure to check out that article which I've linked to in the description below. Next, are Arctic coolers made in the USA? And the answer is no, Arctic coolers are made in China and they do not hide it at all. It is very clear on their FAQ page and when we talk to them. And lastly, are Coleman coolers made in the USA? And the answer is, it's kind of a mixed bag. It really just depends on what cooler you're looking at, so make sure to do your homework beforehand. That's it for this video on how to find coolers made in the USA. If y'all have any questions, drop a comment below or leave us a message at All American Reviews and we'll find out for you and write something up. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and thanks for supporting your country and shopping American-made. See y'all next time.